school. Um, I did change my office. My office is no longer in the white building on the side of the campus, but it is now in the main building. So if you want to come in the main doors and, and I'm the first door on the right, my office should always be open. And uh, I would really ask you to come in and see us, okay? I'm asking you to do that. Uh, if I can help you out in any way, uh, again, I'm here for, for everybody in the city. Um, I'm fortunate to be here. I love the city of Northampton. I've been coming here for years. I'm a Western Mass person myself. I'm from Aguam. And uh, I'm just very lucky and, and fortunate to be a part of this city. So anything I can do, let me know. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to announcements. Are there any announcements? Yes. Um, back in April, Ryan Road School um, PTO put in um, a collection box for clothing and shoes um, as a fundraiser for Nature's Classroom and an ongoing fundraiser. And I just wanted to make a note that to date, as of today, there, we have earned $565. And that's just from people dropping off clothes and um, shoes that they don't want anymore. And you can see it right out in front of Ryan Road. So first, I'd like to urge people to continue to do that. And secondly, um, if the other schools are interested in that, um, that could be possible too, a definite possibility. We were kind of waiting to see how everything panned out at Ryan Road. And it seems to be going really well. So and we're probably going to get another um, thirty or forty dollars this week. The only the money's being earned by um, you know the boxes with clothing and shoes and, and whatnot. Um, we get ten cents per pound for all the, for everything that gets dropped off there, and it goes directly. Well, it was, we I set it up with the school and um, Kurt Robinson, the person who does it. He's a local um, vendor here in, in Florence. And um, I just happened to meet him, and we happened to talk about fundraising, and he gave me this as an idea. And so since I'm active in the PTO in Florence, I mean, in Ryan Road, that's where we started it. But um, he's interested in going into other schools. I was interested in that, too, but not until I knew exactly what we, it was we were looking at. So um, since April, and all it is is out at Ryan Road in the parking lot, they have a big yellow box dropped off, and people drop off school um, shoes and, and clothing. Um, maybe um, no toys or anything, but maybe towels and stuff like that. And we get 10 cents per pound. And I think we negotiated that five cents of that goes towards um, Nature's Classroom Scholarship Fund, and then the other five cents just goes towards Nature's Classroom in general for the whole population. And I'm pretty sure that's how we negotiated it to be. And also negotiated it to be an ongoing fundraiser. So um, I encourage any of the other PTOs, if they're interested, to get a hold of me, um, uh, blueduval at gmail.com or you can call me. And um, just wanted to let everyone know that um, to date we've collected over 5,650 pounds of clothing that people, so it's also a recycling e effort too. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements from the committee? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to recommended actions. Um, uh, we have the consent agenda tonight. Uh, that includes the approval of minutes for the school committee meeting of Thursday, July 12th, 2012. Um, it also uh, includes, I uh, need my contract list here. It includes um, several contracts. Um, uh, W.B. Mason, $60,000 for arts and general supplies. A handwriting without tears, $10,939.06. Uh, Cascade Art and General Supplies, $15,000. Educational Collaborative uh, School Membership Fee, $9,464. Uh, Pearson Educational, uh, educational uh, $24,769.03 in math consumable materials. Uh, Communicate Health, uh, $10,500 for Development Prevention Coalition Marking Products. And the MASC, uh, $5,326 for school committee membership. Uh, also included in the consent agenda are uh, is field trip requests, and this is for the Northampton High School uh, Spain trip April 10th uh, through the 19th, and I'm guessing that should be 2013. Um, it's, I think that's uh, it's on the agenda for 2012, but 2013. Yeah. So is there a motion to... Uh, Two, two corrections to the contract list. Okay. Two of the contracts 
are not going to be signed tonight. Uh, we need some added information from the vendors before we represent those contracts. <coughs> Excuse me, one of those contracts is the WB Mason, and the other one is the Cascade. Both of those are for the arts and the general supplies. Okay. So there's some added information we need before we can present those to you. Okay. So those have been pulled from the list. So then that, that the consent agenda minus those two items. Correct. I'd like to move to approve the um, consent agenda minus those two items. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the consent agenda is approved. Um, and uh, moving on to the next part of the agenda, we're actually going to go a little bit of out, out of order, and we're going to move down to uh, number E. <coughs> this is the um, approval of the school handbooks for uh, NHS and for uh, JFK. And I believe we have um, uh, two vice principals are here this evening. Um, Vice Principal Lombardi is here. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, just a quick question. Um, there's no question, but Joe Jeffrey. Uh, I, I just wanted to, this isn't a trip we've done before, correct? No, this, this is uh, it's a new trip. And actually, we're going to France and Spain. So <coughs> I gave you my itinerary. I, I know we're jumping, but I, I just didn't know. Um, I was prepared to speak, and I just wanted to interpret any question. It moved a little fast for me. There was very little information in there. Well, I think you should, you should receive um, my itinerary. Do you, do you have this packet with the itinerary? No. That should be in there, too. Oh, did we get a I got a packet. I got a packet. I didn't get that in the packet. I sent a new one. I have a copy of it. You can have my copy, too, if you want. That's the consent So I'll look at this. We've already heard this all okay. okay. Yeah, just real quick, Stephanie, it's the same organization. We did the Italian trip last year, education first. Um, and it's the same thing in terms of safety and security, an organization that helps us from beginning to end, planning the trip, tour guides, making all the travel arrangements. Um, the price of 2800 is an all-inclusive for airfare, hotel accommodations, tour guide, um, two meals a day, access to, you know, um, an amazing amount of sites um, between um, Paris and two cities in Spain, um, overnight uh, overnight train from Paris to um, Barcelona. Which kids are going on this trip? Um, right, the students that are taking um, involved in uh, French and Spanish classes. How many? First meeting we had about 43 of interest and um, I've been plugging away and plugging away and um, right now um, we're looking between 12 and 15 seem to be a core group. Um, there's a lot of interest for the summer they're trying to figure out the you know, summer stuff. Are, are you going on the trip? Yes, I, I'm the tour leader. Yes. Is other staff going as well? Um, yes, we'll be on this kid Thank you. Yep. Do you have a question? No, I did, I did want to know about the Spanish and the French together combined trip, too, because I thought in the past it had just been one, not both classes of the languages. Yeah, um, I think we, we felt by talking it was exciting to um, offer an exposure to, to um, both cultures. Um, and that seemed to be the energy that we were getting from a lot of students who they would like to have that, um, that opportunity as well. I think that's great. Um, how long, how, how soon was it that the kids were aware of this so that they could start to raise the $2,800 and also Absolutely. financial um, scholarship or et cetera? Yep. So I, sp I spoke to Brian probably, I didn't, the, I was fortunate enough to bring um, an Italian student to Italy last April and I think I probably spoke to Brian three or four days when I got back. Um, you know, that the bug was laid when I got there and <laughs> But also because realizing it is an expensive trip, right. that people needed as much time to start thinking and planning, especially utilizing the summer months as a possible opportunity to raise money through summer jobs. Um, so we, we, they've, been, they've had this information. We had meetings um, April, May. That was when your first meeting was April or May? Something like that, yes. My daughter's 10. She's already saving. <laughs> right. <laughs> send, send me some ideas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else on that? Sorry to jump around. Okay. Um, and then back, I guess, to the order of um, E, um, approval of the um, Northampton High School Handbook. Um, fundamentally, really, uh, besides the changes we make every year in regards to new staff, and call numbers, dates, and all that, 
Um, big change um, this year. Um, I believe it's going to be on page 10. Um, it's in our um, academic and graduation uh, information um, promotion um, procedures and policies. It's a section um, on academic ethics um, and integrity. Give you a moment to find that. Page 10. It didn't get numbered. Is there a letter um, to the? Um, sorry. Is there a letter for that section? That would we be don't right pay. after graduation requirements. Hold on a second. Academic education requirements for graduation must be these. I have a non-numbered. It's the first section right after the bell schedules, and then it's the academic information requirements of graduation. Yeah. It's at the page right after that. Um, so, so really what we put in, we're trying to, um, we've never had anything in the handbook that really brought um, depth or meaning or discussion about what, what is active integrity, what is honesty. And we've always had in our, in our code of conduct a consequence. If you plagiarize, if you cheat, here's the consequence. Um, but we never really had anything that's trying to give some guidelines to students about what is it. You know, and we felt that, you know, in the high school, I think a lot of schools um, deal with this issue of um, you know, high stakes and issues of academic in, um, honesty, integrity, um, it, of technology. We've had, it brings on another layer of things to talk about and be aware of. And we felt that putting something in writing that really started to put some language in it to help define what it is. I think if you ask students, you know, what it is, they don't have a definition. It's cheating, it's copying. We're trying to expand that, that it's much more than that. Um, it also speaks a little bit more to who you are um, as well. It's not just simply copying some, some work or, or handing it off. So what we're looking to do is put something in the handbook that has some verbiage to it, some definition to it. Um, and we're going to try to establish a, a conversation with our students about, about this. What we didn't want to do is say, OK, this is important. If you do this, you're going to be suspended. You know, the consequences we know is always there. But what we need to do is educate our students about the importance of honesty, integrity, and character. And this is our first step in, um, d down that road. That's that. I'd just like to say that it's very inclusive. Um, and it, it is a lot more information other than just plagiarizing. I mean, yeah. Dean, uh, I think that's, that's really good. Um, I notice here that it says citing web-based sites and information. Um, is there another place where it, it talks about um, valid websites? You know, is that in the technology or, or is it we, just we in have a, we, we do have um, a Northampton High School, and actually NPS district policy on acceptable terms of use. So that typically comes out of that, as well as teachers when they're working with students, what are appropriate sites they should use. So okay. between those categories, that, that helps narrow that down. I was just wondering, because this is so concise, it's, it's, it's really well done, so thank, thank you. you. Questions. I have a question. How is this? The students are going to get this, but is it also emphasized in other way at assemblies or anything else? Like yeah, um, this is one of the things that um, we're going to address on the first day of school. We want to have, um, we want to push this into our advisory groups. Um, I mean, it really needs to be like a grassroots. It needs to come from them. You know, again, if we're just talking down to them and telling them what it is, it's kind of like um, you know Charlie Brown. Wah, wah. You know, <laughs> you need to have them part of the process, um, and they need to make connections. That is, again, it's not just about work. It really is who, who you are um, and how you conduct your business. We want that to be a skill and a trait that they will take. Um, we've had discussions where we want our Northampton students to look like. I, I, I think in our discussion, we want you know integrity, character, honesty. I think it's part of that. So we're going to have that conversation um, in a small group setting, you know, with um, faculty members and about you know 15, you know, 10 to 15 students per, per group. Um. If we're done with that, I have a question. Have any of the graduation requirements changed? Or are those all the same ones that were in there? Every, everything is the same. I haven't, there's been okay. no other changes um, beyond that. No. Not even in technology or anything? I mean, I, mean, I know that we're still working on that in Rules and Policy Committee on unacceptable use of technology, et cetera, et cetera. It's, is it, it any changes from last year? No. Again, no, the only changes besides that one are simple, again, uh, extensions, phone numbers, dates. Okay. Um, if there was any change of a policy we had, I would, I would definitely bring that up. Also, and I know you're going to be a new um, technology director, um, it would probably be remiss of me to move forward from the policy, not including a member that um, I think has a lot to add to our team. So 
That'll be next year. Okay. I have one quick question. I mean, it seems great to include all this. What, what was the genesis of, I mean, how, how did this start the, the idea to, to make this broader? You know, um, I, I, my experience of being in, um, having the opportunity to be in other high schools, um, you know, unfortunately, you, you, you schools deal with this, these challenges of students. Um, you know, and a lot of times it tends to be, you know, our higher, high, higher achieving students, um, very busy, um, and sometimes it's very simple. Well, I was only sharing work. And so we started having these issues and we felt that we really what we had to do was help students understand what it is and start defining it, defining what, what it is. And we didn't want to just lay in the, in, in the land of consequence, consequence. Um, I think if, you, if, you read, if you're reading um, what's out there, I mean, universities are dealing with this higher rate of, of cheating and ac academic dishonesty, and it's spilling down to our levels. You know, the, I mean, the reality is that it is very competitive out there. There's a lot of stakes. Kids are very, very busy. And I think that, um, I, don't, I don't think there's intentions. Um, I think they get lost in what's going on for them, and that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, and it's very short-sighted, obviously. And um, I think our job, that's why we, want, we wanted to do something. We, want, we wanted to address this culture, but we wanted to find what is the best way. And again, having some specifics what it is, trying to help them point it out. Um, even last year, one of our advisors came out when we had an academic integrity initiative. That was one of the advisors. So it's out there. Other students want it too, because I think they get frustrated when they're doing their, their work and they know or they see something happening. Um, so it's a combination of all those little elements that kind of just came together um, la last year. Just a quick thought, will, will the students do anything to kind of acknowledge that they, on an individual basis, that they get this and they understand what the policy is? We're working on that. I was actually working on, I, um, my principal's away for the week, I was working on a pledge uh -huh. statement type of thing that kind of takes this about the importance of um, work and character. Um, so it's something that we're going to be working on a a as well. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on the policy book? Okay. But do we, we can wait to Is vote? We can vote on them all together. Not yet. Oh. Not yet? Okay. Um, I was just noticing, actually it was pointed out to me by um, someone, that on the school committee on the third page or something. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Stephanie Pick. It says, Honorable David Narkowitz, Chairperson, and Stephanie Pick, Vice Chairman. Oh, okay. So I thought maybe we could. Chairperson, yeah, we should make that university. If, if, if it hasn't been. <laughs> Just be chair, vice chair. Vice chair. Okay. And I was just going to ask, could, could I just be mayor instead of honorable? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they're, we're all honorable. We're all, sorry, <laughs> we could call it the honorable school. No, yeah, I, the honor. I, I was just thinking, so that's, I would just say replace honorable with mayor. I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Not a member of Congress or a judge or anything. Well, you know, that's pretty easy. So I, that's, that's fantastic, not a problem. Well, Mr. Lombardi, I want to compliment your work on this and also uh, Nancy Athos. And I want to say how nice it is to see these ideas evolve because I know the integrity and character came from the students through the advisory program last year, and now you're making it a little more substantive by putting it in the handbook and you continue to evolve it into a pledge. And I think it's great when an idea takes hold like that, and especially the way it started through the kids. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's nice. Thank you. Ryan, is this handbook going to be online for folks? Yeah, um, yes. We, so we um. It'll be on the website for the high school. It is on the website, and um, this year we are going back since you added that. Um, years ago, they stopped handing out um, agendas, and so this year we're actually going to be handing out agendas as well. So I, I've made a streamlined version of this handbook, of really just student-centered stuff. Um, that they're going to have, not they can get a copy of this, you can get a copy of it online, and they're also going to be ha getting um, daily planners slash agendas that will have this and that as well. So we're trying to hit it multi levels, multi multiple access um, to, get, to get this. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kanata. Hi, uh, Just personally, thank you for moving us up in the agenda. It's, it's wonderful for me. Um, get through me first, I suppose, or through me earlier. Um, side note, it's my eighth time coming before the committee. Stephanie, you're the only one who's been here every time, including the TV people. <laughs> Anyone else has been here. I have very few changes for our handbook. Before I mention the handbook, I just want to mention uh, Mr. Lombardi's presentation, how nice that is to hear. 
you know, just the fact that they're going to Europe again. And uh, if they need a second assistant principal to chaperone, I'd be willing to <laughs> offer my services. I also am very happy the fact that we're showing the character initiatives because it's something that's been living and breathing here at JFK uh, for, for a while. So it's great to see that we're on a continuum. <clears throat> What I did do, in, um, or what I did prepare, I actually put together a, a little bit of uh, some notes here for you that I didn't include in my original packet. They're very simple, but I think it just make it a little easier to go through. I can actually begin before uh, you get these because it's that simple. Essentially, our handbook has done some evolving over the past seven years. And uh, like very much like the high school, there's not a whole lot of changes going on in here. The most significant changes are uh, administrative changes, school committee changes that, have, that uh, have to be changed year to year, as well as phone numbers and dates and who's doing what. Um, one thing that did change in the handbook is the mission statement, since a district mission statement has changed. Uh, I've added that in on it's the introductory section, uh, Roman numeral eight, right at the beginning, just prior, just above the JFK Middle School uh, vision statement. That's so school committee administrative changes, mission statement changes, and then um, Ms. Towler from central office sent me something that had to be put in there from FERPA, which I've included under student records on page 12, which is simply an explanation of parent and guardian rights to student records and what their rights are. That would be on page 12. Um, and then, the, if you can call them substantial changes or biggest changes, are on page 13, where our school nurse, who has just finished up our, her second year, is comfortable in the building now, went through it all, and didn't like the way it was presented. She felt it was kind of harsh before. Um, it started off by, there are two rules in the nurse's office. Number one, respect the office, and number two, see rule one. And I can understand the changes in that, I'm not wanting to change that. The health suite is an incredibly busy place, and I will say that Ms. Raniak and uh, Ms. Schiaffo are incredibly welcoming and do right by our students. So she cleaned it up a little bit, but it pertains or contains all the same information. Health screenings, health records, uh, the emergency form, uh, information about medication, exclusion from school, attendance, illness, and then she changed a title um, within her information from sexual education to puberty education. Um, and then she made two additions. She talked about dismissals with children, making sure that the proper channels are followed, and accidents should they occur during the day, what, what, how they're reported. Um, and that's essentially it. We we'll have a whole lot more. Are there any questions or uh, comments? Well, in the eight years of listening to you do that, that was the shortest. <laughs> and the most early. So. <laughs> like, so in the beginning, you made a lot of changes, and every year you've had yeah. to make fewer. Show us how, sure. how well you did it the, the first few times. Well, I'm glad you made that comment because, uh, first of all, thank you for doing this. Thank you for being here tonight. I know you're just about to start your family vacation, so I appreciate your commitment to JFK and uh, to be here for the school committee. But I think. Uh, what you just said, Stephanie, demonstrates the importance of stability and consistency in the administrative team. And we have people who are committed to our system uh, year after year. We can take uh, significant changes at the beginning, and then they become subtle changes and become a part of the way we do business as the years go on. So I certainly appreciate your work on this, but I also appreciate your commitment over the years to the district. I guess the only thing I'll say, I'm sorry, Andrew. I yep. said, Request. Yep. This looks great, but I would request that my name is called Greg Dennis Cooper. And I'll say it's a dent not here. We might want to do it. That's right. You told me it wasn't going to be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got it. Pretty good. <laughs> and do you want me to do the same with the uh, chairperson <laughs> and mayor? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll I keep would, it consistent. I would prefer the mayor over. Okay. And uh, one of the things that we've done, uh, this will be my final statement, is over the years working with the uh, high school is trying to have a lot of consistencies. So uh, as he was speaking to academic integrity, I went and peeked at ours, and ours is about plagiarism and uh, what not to do. So try to align that more next year. Thank you.
So my my handbook that's on that came in the packet started on page one. I don't have all of those Roman numeral pages and I got a fun, yeah. funky version on the intro has the picture on the front. Yeah. I don't have mine just starts at page one. On the computer. It doesn't have the intro, it doesn't have all the the table of contents and all that oh. stuff. Can you get the intro? Oh, is it a separate one? Yes. Yeah, it's handbook. You know what? You must have sent an, um, an email that had several things, and I didn't open them all because I was missing something else before, too. I, okay. It must have been in the same email with the trip about France and Spain that I didn't get. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sam. So. Drive so, safe. Uh, so I would um, now ask, I guess, for a motion by the committee to approve both of the handbooks for the high school and for the middle school. Move to approve. Okay, second. Okay. Any? I tried to move, but they paid me. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so all those in favor of approving the handbooks? Uh, Aye. Aye. Sam? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I would note the arrival of Mr. Meyer. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the thank next, you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, we're also going to um, uh, move a little bit more out of order and uh, move down to G. Uh, this would be the food service report uh, by Carol DeParo. Good evening. <laughs> this is our annual state of the onion report, as opposed to the other. <laughs> uh, Participation has gone up in the last year. We serve over 24,000 breakfasts and 194,000 student lunches. The lunches have increased 12.2% in one year over 2011. We brought in almost $24,000 in income over last year and most of it was due to the USDA reimbursements that we get for the student lunches and that's because we're selling more reimbursable meals. More students are eating the regular meals. Expenses have also increased because as you feed more children, you need more food to feed them. Um, our expenses were up by almost $36,000. Most of the increase was due to increased purchases for fresh fruits and vegetables and foods. Our fresh fruits and vegetables have increased by over 94% in the last two years. Most of the items that we use every day have gone up 63% in two years, which is huge. Lettuce, tomatoes, uh, greens, and all that type of thing. Labor did decrease by over $9,000. Part of this has to do with no step raises, no cost of living and we are using more substitutes at a lower pay than permanent employees. When a permanent employee leaves, we post the position and our staff has the opportunity to take a permanent position, but a lot of them opt not to, so these positions go unfilled and we have to fill with subs. Overall, the, the uh, program has done fairly well. You can see by the chart, from April 1st of 2001 when I started, we had a negative balance of $118,000 and we ended this year with a positive balance of $7,180. And you can see how it's progressed through the years. Our expenses, besides the cost of food, supplies, and labor, we have other expenses. Our software and our service contract for a point of sale computers was just under $10,000. Uh, repairs and maintenance for our equipment was just under $8,000. Serve safe training, we paid $3,000. All of our permanent employees need to be certified in serve safe. We had to buy a clothes washer for JFK. We wash all the towels and aprons from all the schools. Um, our computer monitor here at JFK bit the dust, so we bought one for $96. And then the lunchbox computer system that we use for the student lunches, that needed to have an upgrade this year, and that's gonna cost $6,000.
So a total of $27,412. Accomplishments in 2012, we eliminated the a la carte line at the high school. In its place, we started five different stations. One of these was the fresh entree. Another one was grab and go. Another one is pizza of the day. The fourth was sub of the day. And the fifth was entree salad. This concept worked well. We increased our reimbursable meals at the high school by over 17,000 meals, or 62% in one year. We replaced some old pieces of equipment, some of them uh, from 1964. This was done through a city bond issue. Uh, JFK got a new steamer and tilt kettle for $29,000. Bridge Street replaced the dishwasher, which was circa 1991, that was $13,000. And Jackson St Street got a dishwasher, which was circa 1980 for $19,000. So the total bond issue was $61,562. Things that we're looking at for the future for 2012. The USDA and federal government have decided to come up with a new list of regulations starting July 1st. The whole concept of school lunch is going to change. The amount of fruits and vegetables we'll be serving the students will double. There'll be weekly requirements for dark green leafy vegetables, red and orange vegetables, beans and legumes, starchy vegetables, and all the other vegetables. At least half the grains have to be whole grain rich. And we have two years to do this. We're going to attempt to make all our grains whole grain rich this year. So we'll be ahead of the curve. White milk will be low fat, and chocolate milk will be fat free. Those are the only two options of milk that we'll have. And the meat and the meat alternatives, this has been reduced. The range will be anywhere from one to two ounces per serving, depending on the age group of the students. There is also additional regulations governing competitive foods and beverages. These are the things that are served, food served in the classrooms, school stores, school snack bars, vending machines, concession stands, fundraising. Uh, there are new regulations on all of them and it has become very restrictive as to what you can sell at these different places. The uh, free and reduced applications will be going home the first day of school. Everyone has the child's name on it. We ask they be returned by September 10th. And uh, for those that don't return one, we'll be sending out a second and third one <coughs> until they do get returned. There's a list here of qualified students from the last six years. In September of 26, we had 27% of the students that were free or reduced. As of this June 2012, we were up to 31%. So we've grown 4% in six years as far as free and reduced. Uh, as far as the point of sale or lunchbox system, we're in the process of installing My School Bucks, which is an online payment system for parents. They'll be able to make payments to their child's lunchbox account. They can use credit cards or online banking. We hope to have everything up and running by the first day of school, but the information we're sending to parents is October 1st at the very latest. Uh, there will be a memo sent home to all parents when the system's ready, and they can also get information on our website. So, are there any questions? Yes. Um, you said that, that what's being sold is now going to be regulated at, as of the school year, mm -hmm. and that includes things like bake sales. Bake sales, yes. What, what are the what kinds of regulations? Uh, there's something that's called the A-list. It's put out by the Stalker Institute, and a lot of the things have to meet that. Uh, also, you can't have a bake sale from a half an hour before school starts through the whole school day to a half an hour afterwards. So like bake sales on voting days, 
that's not going to be affected because normally we don't have school on those days. Um, and normally bake sales don't happen during the school day. You're not really selling to the students, you're selling more to the parents. Actually, I know at the high school there is a lot that happens during the day. All the various groups that are fundraising have things going on during the day. But I was more concerned about um, what parents are used to making for bake sales. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that all, that, all the desserts that are usually brought in, that's going to be more limited, what people can bring in? Not really, because it'll be outside the, um, the realm of the restrictions. It, it'll happen after the hours. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. Half hour before and half hour after. Well, when kids go on trips, they often have bake sales during the day. So that's not going to be allowed anymore. Well, it's actually not allowed right now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not going to be happening during the school day? It shouldn't be, no. Okay. And how about vending machines? So that just, what are those regulations about? Vending machines, the only place we have vending machines basically are the high school, and that's in the cafeteria area, and a lot of those have gone to um, healthy choice, who's the ones from the A-list. Uh, the other ones have to meet the A-list, and they can't be on from a half hour before school to a half an hour after school. But the, the, the things are available if you have sports events or whatever. All this is going to be delineated in the new wellness policy. I know that Karen Jarvis Vance has been working on also. And so I think just to clarify that, the food service department can have vending machines in the lunchroom on with approved items in there. Um, it's the competitive machines that wouldn't be allowed to be on during the school day or half an hour before or after. Even if they have healthy food in them? Right, because okay. it can't compete with the food service program. I just had a question about what, what do you think the new USDA re, uh, regulations are going to mean in terms of um, participation costs for the for the lunch program? Any idea? Or? Well, they're going to go up um, with all the fresh fruits and vegetables. Every lunchtime, we'll be giving the children three different kinds of vegetables plus fruit. Uh, it's definitely going to go up, particularly with the drought in the Midwest. Uh -huh. uh, I think we're going to be impacted severely uh -huh. all over. Um, the whole grains, those are going to cost more too. Right. So it's going to be an added cost. They are going to um, incorporate six cents more per meal if you meet all the standards. Okay. My question was for bake sales, I'm um, not bake sales, um, birthday parties or whatnot in the classroom, um, what, what parents can bring in. Does that affect this anywhere? Provided the school committee and the principals go along with it. Um, it's recommended that they have either healthy snacks, um, and there's lists that you can get of what's approved, or not to do food at all and find something different for um, birthday parties. You know, giving the kids pencils or stickers, or um, you know, buy a book for the library instead of bringing in cake and, and things. The goal behind this whole thing is the obesity problem in the country. It's not me making up the rules. It's the federal government. And um, they're looking for people to cut, cut their weight. Thank you. Any other questions about the uh, food service report? Um, there is a required uh, vote that the school committee needs to take each year. Um, that is to uh, rec uh, authorize our <coughs> continued participation in the National School Lunch Program for FY 2013. I think we need to have a formal motion and vote on that. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. So all those in favor of uh, authorizing participation in the National School Lunch Program say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Carol. Okay, uh, returning back to the, um, back up to A, uh, we'll go to the business manager's report. Thank you. Um, packet, there was a number of 
pieces of information that was supplied to you. I do have information here after I finish. Uh, but let me just start off, uh, again, some of the noteworthy items. Uh, the fiscal year will close out at zero. We will be using some of our choice and some of our circuit breaker funds to balance out and finish the year out at zero, but we will um, complete the year. We will be um, at a zero position when we end. The FY13 budget um, will be loaded in the Munis system in October. Um, there's a lot of other behind the scenes type things going on right now. Um, you will not see a budget. Uh, you will, I can get your financial reports, but you will not see the budget loaded. There's some technical difficulties in getting the budget up for one year when we're still trying to close out the current 12. And most of that is technical, behind the scenes, uh, software type uh, issues. So um, there will be a financial statement, but you won't see the budget as you voted it uh, on June 14th. Um, as a reminder, the June 14th budget is on the website. It is loaded up just in the booklet that you folks did receive back in June. Uh, it's there for everybody's uh, perusal, so you want to uh, share it with other people. Um, as of July 25th, when I was putting this letter together, we hadn't had any construction uh, activity being done at the Leeds School. Since then, uh, there has been uh, a drastic turnaround with activity and work going on at the school. And I had been out there today, and there was at least uh, seven or eight uh, individuals there, either painting or um, doing some electrical work and other types of things to try to finish off and square away those rooms. The contracts uh, that were read before, um, we, were, we were hopeful to get those two art and supply contracts in. Um, on, again, unfortunately, we didn't have all the complete information supplied to us. Um, again, trying to get the packet out to you in advance. I'm trying to give uh, you a heads up as to the contract versus trying to surprise you at the end of the meeting and making an addendums when we're here in session. I think it works out a little bit easier if I put them on the list. It's easier to take them off if there's an issue versus trying to add them on at the last minute. So I'm trying to change the process of how we get those contracts to flow through. Uh, the um, final financial statement for fiscal FY12, the year that I'm still living in, <laughs> unfortunately, FY12, I'm still trying to close the books on one side of me, and on the other side, I'm trying to make sure 13 is moving forward. But at the September meeting, I will have a financial report for you in the same and similar format that you've seen all along throughout the past year. There are other forms, but um, I will get you that final format so you can see how everything had shaken out uh, for the year. I just talked about the uh, Clark School uh, construction project. Um, I'd like to uh, mention too that we're just uh, still transferring some more monies, grants, revolving accounts, and still trying to spend every last penny we have in all of those items. Even though we have some grants, that we can count in our FY12 budget that for the federal government do not technically close until August 31st. I still consider those, and so does the uh, Department of Revenue and the auditors as part of our FY12 fiscal year. So we're not quite there yet. We still have a little more activity that we can still squeeze into a couple of grants without trying to give any money back. So we're trying to jockey uh, for position here and make sure that we get all of our funds uh, maximized into those grants. And uh, Carol, just before uh, talk to you about the software no notification module that we're still working on. The hardware is here. The installation is uh, going smoothly. We're involving the treasurer's office so we can get that to run smoothly. There's again some software technicalities that have to be met so when a parent's at home with a, cr a debit card or a credit card, it goes through the lunchbox um, software 
it gets recorded one way in the software. The city also receives notification from the third party vendor that they have accepted the payment. So there is some treasurer auditor type transactions that will be happening along with this software package. It'll be seamless and uh, to the, the general public, but behind the scenes until we get the actual structure, the routing of the payments set up with the treasurer's office, uh, again, that'll be taken care of and be done by the first of the year, oh, first of the year, when school starts in September. So that is uh, the business manager. Okay. Yes. I have a couple of questions. Uh, the lease contract, I, I, according to the signed lease, the construction must be completed by August 10th, tomorrow. Um, and it also states that the agreement has been amended for language clarity. When do you now, I mean, is, has that also been changed as far as the date? Obviously, something has to give. But um, when would that date be now? That's a good question. I do not know. I don't have an answer for that. But the language changes have been uh, made and recommended. I know the superintendent has a copy, and I believe uh, we're waiting for the language changes to come back from the union. Okay. Well, when it says the contract, the construction must be completed by August 10th, are there penalties for not? Are we keep? I mean, when there are no penalties in the uh, lease agreement that we have with them. Um, that's what they had signed and agreed to. The date was determined in order to allow smooth business flow of what we have to do in our buildings to get the, um, the buildings cleaned, the uh, um, uh, floors uh, buffed, polished, uh, classrooms set up. Teachers, uh, to my knowledge, are going to be coming in, excuse me, sometime next week. Um, there will still be construction going on next week uh, while teachers are coming in to set up into the building. Um, do they? Uh, why didn't they start till after um, July 25th? It wasn't originally going to start in June or the beginning of July or something like there, that. There, that is correct. Their original date to start was June 25th. Um, uh, the the spaces in which they're renting had been cleared out, ready for any type of construction. Um, I do not have a clear answer of why they haven't been in on that date or in up and through July 25th. Oh, okay. All right, another question that I have on that. Um, on the food service, are credit card numbers going to be on file or each time does somebody have to put in a new check number or a new credit card number or is, I mean, we're not holding people's credit cards on files or are we? No, because it's going through a third party like a PayPal, mm -hmm. there's, um, the Lunchbox program has their own 30 par third party agent in which handles those transactions. Uh, we'll not, we will not see a credit card. We will not see a debit card. Uh, all that's done just <coughs> as it, you know, your own personal privacy at home using your credit card when you enter it in to pay that. The only thing that we see is the identification number of the student so we know how to apply those payments. So when we see the transaction come through, either through electric wire um, or some type of a computer generated report, we'll see a student identification number, an amount paid, and a date when that was paid. And I kind of fibbed. I do want to go back to the lease contract. <laughs> okay. Well, we talked about integrity in the high school, and we talked about that as far as defining it and academic integrity. And they signed a lease with us stating that they would start on June 25th, and according to you, we had everything ready for it. So I'm kind of interested, I mean really interested actually, in why it was a month late. And I know that you can't address that because you said you don't know, but I just wanted to make be known that I don't like that as an answer. <laughs> well, I can share with you what I know. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, so Mark and I have had very close contact with Bill Corwin through this entire project. And after we cleared, cleared the rooms for them at the end of June, um, they did some minor, more deconstruction than construction, pulling out ceiling tiles, pulling some of the things out of the room to prepare for the construction. In the meantime, Mark and I were very concerned that the actual construction hadn't started yet, so we met with, Mar uh, with Bill a number of times uh, to find out what was happening, because we were concerned that it wouldn't be finished on the date. 
and according to Bill Corwin and his work with his architect and his general contract, his architect and his general contractor, their work was more behind the scenes, that they were doing the planning and the design, things that they were building in the shop that they weren't actually building on site. So they weren't bringing, for example, floor tiles and lumber and laying it in the hallway while they were waiting to do the work. They were doing the prep work for it. We really doubted uh, seeing the lack of progress that they were going to be able to pull it off. And I have to say uh, my compliments to the group that's doing the work. Uh, when they had all the prep work done and they were ready to go, they have been really impressive in their work these past two weeks and gotten a lot of construction work done. So the plan is that uh, anything that would be in our way, in the hallways and so forth, will be finished tomorrow. Um, they will do some work over the weekend and then what they have to do next week will be interior, so in their confined space. They'll have some carpet to lay and so forth, but that shouldn't interfere with the work our custodians need to do. And they will have to do some work on an HVAC system that's on the roof. But as far as bringing things in and out of the school and interrupting our floor cleaning and so forth, that should all be finished tomorrow, according to Bill. And interrupting the other teachers too, as they tried right. to be in the building, and that was one right. of the concerns. Right, so that was the concern. You do see that as being done tomorrow? I was told this morning that it will be done tomorrow. Yes. Right. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Um, Mark, I just had a question on, you mentioned transfers from school choice and circuit breaker, um, which is normally done to close out various accounts that might have any deficiencies. So last, at the end of the last fiscal year, I believe that we had $140,000 carried over from prior year school choice. Correct. And so what I just want to be clear on, um, are we at zero in prior year school choice and are now making transfers from FY12 school choice? Or is this, or is FY12 school choice not being expended at this point? The FY12 school choice was laid out in the budget with all the itemized uh, staffing, um, maintenance, uh, facilities, items. Now, when right. you voted the budget, the amount of dollars that were there, I think it was like a million six, I don't know the exact number, but that particular sheet and document that you had, I itemized everything that was in the FY12 year that the school committee voted to approve as spending from that particular account. Right. Um, we did have um, some reserves that were carried forward that you were talking about, but when we started this fiscal FY12 year, there was a vote, you know, of adding a teacher. We, the teacher was added, and the place that that teacher was coming out of was school choice. Okay. So when some of these positions, some of the addition of staff or increased expenses, um, according to what type of activities and what type of expenditures could come out, we have used m more school choice monies in some cases than what had been initially um, designated. We are using the reserves that had been built up over time. And if you went back and you looked, you would see that some of the reserves three or four years ago were probably 300,000 and then it was 250 and then about 180 to 150. And then right now we're down between um, probably five to $25,000 mm -hmm. in that account. That's why when I've mentioned before that the numbers are extremely tight, um, we have maximized all the monies we have using the reserves and using the current funding uh, that has come in during the course of the year. Thank you. I just had a question. The 300,000 that you said that we had, um, and it's at five to 25,000 now, how many years ago was that? Was that? I'm gonna say it was like four years ago. And again, that it's not just a particular year that made up that 300, it had been accumulations of small amounts other of previous years that kept adding on to get to that amount. So it had increased uh, to a point and you know, four years ago we decided to, as a committee, uh, I wasn't here, but the committee had decided to use some of those monies for programs and curriculum and other types of uh, staffing needs. Okay, I remember that. Any other questions about the business manager's report? I believe that you also had a personnel report to submit 
to the school committee? That's the next report. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess the personnel report would be the next. I <laughs> personnel report. Did, I'm going to pass that around for everybody here. I'll give you that one too. Hold on. I'll give you that one. Yes. Yeah. Should have fallen under. This, this personnel report, um, unfortunately, I had overlooked in early on in the process. Uh, when we were at the alt retreat, I did get this email sent to me, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I had not picked up on it to put it in your packet and get it out to you earlier, but it was sent to me during the alt retreat. So I apologize for not getting this report to you. It is a combination of the end of the year June activity because we did have so much activity at the end of the year and there were notices to teachers and other staff members in the buildings as to uh, either separations or people be retiring and there was just such a flurry of activity at the end of the year and also as we turn the page and go into July all the new people that we had started to interview and started to bring on in-house in and bring on for staffing. So again, in the, new, in the same format that you've used to be, uh, had been seeing, you have the new hires, you have any of the separations, you have retirements, and you have promotions and transfers for a two month period. Are there any questions about the personnel report? Uh, that's a good question. Was the separation of Mark Prince on the previous report? I don't recall. Uh, I don't have it with me, but I, I can't answer that. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I did have, I have, I have an item close out of FY12, but I believe you've already addressed that. In no, I, no, okay. nope, I still have that to go. Okay. All right. <coughs> this report that's going, uh, around the table right now is the same format, same budget transfers that some of you as committee members have seen in the past. This particular sheet here, I hate to say this, but doesn't have any real bearing as to the activities that we have incurred during the year. The requirement of this sheet is that it is a request of the outside audit firm that does audit the city books and the school books. They ask, because of the way the school committee votes and approves the budget, that a certain transfer takes place for their clarity when they come in to audit the books. So this sheet is a balancing of accounts because when you do vote the budget, um, certain monies are in certain categories according to the Department of Education. And in some cases, we overspend some of those categories and we underspend some of those categories. But the bottom line is we still only have what was voted by the school committee. This is a balancing between the Department of Education accounts as requested by the auditor's office, not the auditor's office, the outside auditing firm who does our books. This is something uh, they need to have in order for them to proceed with closing of our books. This doesn't require any kind of vote. It does need a vote because they want to know that you have seen this and <clears throat> after I get finished with this tonight and you vote on this, a copy goes to the city's auditor's office and to the city finance director and they have that on file too. So when they come into audit, they also use that sa the same document. Okay. Mr. Bourne? My only question is what should we be looking for here? I mean, if there was something funky in here. The zero on the bottom days. line. Um, <laughs> you, you would never be able to tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what they're looking for is probably the zero at the bottom. Yeah. They're, they're looking at the far right hand corner uh, and on line 12 coming down or line, it should be line 13, it says summary balance of end of year position. As long as that ends in zero, that's what they're looking for. Though it seems simple, this is a complicated task and it's taken a lot of hours and a lot of work on Mark's part. So I thank you very much for your commitment to getting this done today. And You're welcome. Did it does take you until 714 tonight to get it done? <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been at it all day. Well all done. All day and some yesterday too. <laughs> um, I move to approve. Second. 
Okay, so there's been a motion made to um, approve this FY12 uh, closeout um, of the appropriation budget. Um, it's been seconded. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, Thank you very okay. much. Okay. So the next item is the superintendent's report. All right, thank you. I have a number of things to report on tonight. And I'd like to uh, begin, uh, for those of you who didn't have a chance to meet Angelo Rota, our new director of Innovative Instruction and Technology. He's joining us here tonight in the audience. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, Joanna McKenna gets to do her first report as director of academic effectiveness. And that is that you, as a school committee, uh, vote on the handbook for the middle school and the high school. But the question comes up, well, what do we do with the elementary handbook? And the elementary handbook is created by the principals. It's a united effort uh, to build that handbook for all four of our elementary schools. But that has changes from year to year, too. So we thought um, you may be interested in just hearing a few of those changes. So Joanna was here to highlight those for you tonight. This doesn't require a vote. <laughs> Yes, please. I imagine you got this in your packet, is that right? Okay, most of the changes are, are highlighted um, in there. And like the other people commented, we did not really make any major changes in the handbook. We updated the uh, FERPA policy for um, student records for parents, we changed names, dates, people, things like that. Um, but there, the biggest change, I think, was actually in um, bus transportation. Um, sorry, I don't have the, um, it was on a separate, yeah, they came on separate two separate, sheet of the changes. separate pla places, places, sorry. Um, yeah, nine, there we go. Um, there's a, a new um, policy in the transportation department for allowing parents uh, who live a mile and a half from school to purchase a bus pass. That had been in the old um, handbook, so we updated that. Um, and we also um, included the updated transportation website address, which wasn't in our old handbook either. Um, we had in our old handbook where it says on the, on the top paragraph there, um, dropped drop-off times. We used to mail that out to parents um, with the mailing that goes out in August and now uh, it's provided when they pick up their bus passes. So we changed the uh, handbook to reflect that. Um, another change um, that was put in which um, we will uh, make parents aware of particularly for both bus and van parents um, the bus doesn't, the drivers do not let off um, preschool children or kindergarten children um, from either a bus or a van um, without a, a responsible adult present. And um, uh, the uh, transportation supervisor is considering a fee for um, when the van or bus has to bring a child back to school because um, there wasn't anyone to um, meet them because actually the school district does have to pay for the van to make that extra and the bus to make that extra trip. Um, but we left it as maybe charged and it's, it's discretionary. So, um, you know, we will talk about it at elementary principals and with the transportation supervisor to have some guidelines about when it may be necessary. But we wanted parents to have a heads up that it may be a possibility. It, it's a very rare occurrence but it does cost money to the, transfer, uh, the transportation department. So other, I can't think of anything more controversial in there than that. Um, we did update on page 18 um, and page 19 in, uh, when we're talking about in the section about the programs that are offered. Um, we updated the ELL um, program description to include um, uh, where services are provided at Jackson Street and also um, updated the preschool, the integrated preschool, so that it was at Bridge. Uh, our last handbook had it at Jackson Street. And we uh, uh, removed uh, the information about the DARE program because we had replaced the DARE program with the All Stars program and we weren't doing that anymore. Now, those are the major changes. 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can you explain that why we don't have to vote on the elementary, but we do have to vote on middle school? Um, there's no regulation to vote on the elementary school. The ESC doesn't require it. Isn't that odd? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I have a question. What was there replaced with again? I didn't hear. The All Stars sure. program. The All Stars Junior. The All Stars um, is a um, you know healthy choice um, decision making program that's used at JFK, and so All Stars Junior is the program that was being used at the. Uh, school it's one of uh, Karen Jarvis fans has researched this and this is one of the most highly regarded research based programs to teach this kind of um, uh, instruction does it still have um, a liaison with a police officer I know now that um, Al St. Ange um, retired is there still a police presence I mean with the kids and I, right. I honestly point. can't with, answer uh, that. I do not uh, think I can. there has been a... Yeah. With uh, the retirement of Al St. Ange, that position is not being replaced in the elementary schools. So um, the implementation of the All-Stars curriculum is still up in the air as to how we're going to or if we're going to be able to put that, uh, give, offer that to our fifth graders. Yeah. I said one. Just a um, point of curiosity, what, what would the fee be charged for a child? No, being returned I, to school? I, I honestly don't know, but I can just, find out. Yeah, I mean, because I think that for parents, if they think it's going to be $10 or $20 and it's uh, 150 because that's what our transportation provider specifies that might be helpful for them to know in advance. Yeah, I think that's a, I think actually, I don't think this hasn't gone out for print yet, has it? No, so we can, we can it, put something in there. It's going to have to be high, high enough to be a deterrent, but right. obviously not, you know, unreasonable. Yep. Two questions. Um, is the reason that the, the bullying policy is highlighted because it wasn't included before, so that's now the policy is in the handbook? Mm -hmm. um, the policy is highlighted. The of it. reason why it's highlighted is because it, it was um, updated. I think we had some, it, it wasn't exactly the same as the policy that was in the um, high school and middle school handbook, and we want them to be the same. And the, the last thing on the last page where you have the, the names of people who have changed, is Mr. Rota's first name Angelo? Yes. Here is down is Antonio. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's that's. We will try to get the correct name. Uh, yeah, it would be good. <laughs> to like, oh, I thought I, I thought I had. It. Yeah, and actually, I uh, I also noticed um, when I was looking at it that I think our Vince coordinator has changed as well. Um, so I need to get the right person for that position too. Thank Any you. other questions? No? Oh, Jennifer Taller. It's another, it's another name change. It says towels on the. Oh, okay. Thanks. One of the benefits of putting these things online yeah. is to make these changes without reprinting. Exactly. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get all of this? Hey, on with the superintendent's report. Uh, first thing I want to do was respond last month. I explained to you about the associate principal's changes and how I was going to improve special education services and programs at the middle school and the high school. And Howard Moore um, asked me, well, what do we do at the elementary school? And I didn't have the answer to that, but I promised to bring it back to you today, which I am do, going to do now. So um, at the elementary school, of course, the numbers are smaller per building. It's a little more manageable for the ETL and the principal. The initial and three-year evaluation team meetings are convened by the chairperson, uh, are convened and chaired by the ETL at each school. Uh, all the staff who have tested or who work with the student will attend the meetings and the principal attends also. So what that means is the special education teacher, the classroom teacher, the school psychologist, and anyone else involved, if the speech and language pathologist um, is there, PT, OT, guidance, whoever it is um, involved with the child attends the meeting. The only staff who does not regularly come to the meeting is the specialist teachers, uh, art, music, and PE, mainly because their numbers are so large that they couldn't come to every meeting. Uh, the classroom teacher is required to be at the meeting. The principal attends almost every meeting unless there's a serious conflict. And then, uh, once again, the ETL chairs the meeting, manages the entire process, including writing the IEP and the goals, uh, working with the professional staff. So I want to make sure I clarified that open question from last month. I included in your packet um, the AP scores from this year that are absolutely astounding. 
and I was very excited about them, which is why I put them in your packet. I wanted to highlight just a few things for you. Uh, we will have a full AP presentation. I've asked uh, Nancy Athis and the AP coordinator from the high school to come in October to give you more data on it. But uh, you can certainly see the summary sheet, the numbers of AP students uh, from 2008 to 2012, how that has grown. And what's most important in those numbers growing is that the diversity of the students taking the classes has grown, and that's been intentional and uh, something that the high school administration and teachers have been working very hard at, making those classes more inclusive. What I think on the second page, the summary by student dem demographics, I, I have to admit that the morning I got this summary from the teacher, I called my previous high school in Wisconsin, and I talked to the AP coordinator and I said, ha, you gotta hear this. The first statistic that I find just unbelievable is calculus AB. With 29 students in the class, and 25 of 29 scored fives in AP Calculus. That really should be investigated. That's impossible that <laughs> anybody <laughs> that many fives. And uh, out of the 29, uh, 28 received passing scores. As I went through each one of these classes, it's really astounding. There's no other word for it. Another example, uh, the high school I was at in Wisconsin, Sauk Prairie High School, was the same size as our high school here. English language composition, AP, we usually had one section, 23 to 24 kids in AP English every year. We had 125 students in English language composition. It's not even close, it's, it's indescribable. And to have that many students, uh, you know, almost 100 students receive passing scores out of 125. That success rate is something that's beyond compare. And those are the kind of statistics that our teachers are doing. And this is a credit to our teachers all through the system because these kids receive preparation and learning from the first time they enter our doors in preschool through the high school. And our high school teachers have the skills and the experience to capitalize on the, the education of our students to get these kind of results. Um, I can't stop bragging about it. So I will talk to anyone from any school and compare our kids to them. And this is the kind of thing that gets us in the Washington Post as the top 20 schools uh, in Massachusetts because our teachers and our students are getting impressive results. So I hope you enjoyed looking at those stats and uh, can I, I welcome you to compare it to any of those famous Metro West school districts and see the percentages our kids against theirs. I want to continue on with the highlights from the buildings across the district, um, what's going on over the summer. At the high school, Fred Itterly, our uh, head guidance counselor, participated in a consortium of Vermont College's bus tour. This is a group of 30 to 40 counselors who, will, who tour 18 colleges in six days. And this is a good way for our counselors to get a first-hand look at colleges that they can help advise the kids on, uh, you know, good fit for the kids, but yes, those of you who have done college visits and <laughs> are sitting there imagining 18 colleges in six days, <laughs> that's exhausting. Uh, on with the AP successes, Amy Johnson, physics teacher and Sue Biggs, chemistry teacher, traveled to Dallas, Texas on Sunday, June 24th to attend a Train the Trainers program for laying the foundation for future AP coursework. These two teachers were selected uh, through the MIMSI grant and they paid for them to go uh, so that they can be trained to run trainings for other teachers. So now our two AP teachers are going to be training other AP teachers on how to get the successes that we get in Northampton High School. So they will come back, they'll be able to train some of our teachers, but also teachers in surrounding districts as well. And Leslie Prudhomme, biology teacher, attended a two-week molecular biology course at Smith College this summer with Steve Williams. This course is the equivalent of two semesters of molecular biology at the college level. Let me repeat that. This two-week course is the equivalent of two semesters of molecular biology at the college level. And this work was sponsored by New England Biolabs, and Leslie was able to attend thanks to a $4,000 scholarship from them. Leslie will then go on to attend the MIMSI training at Bentley University July 30th through August 3rd um, in the biology discipline. At JFK, uh, this summer, students from JFK had the unique opportunity to participate in the Summer Adventures in Leadership program. Uh, the SAIL program, not connected to SAIL Canada, but quite a coincidence. 
The program is a joint collaboration between Northampton Public Schools and Smith College. One faculty member from JFK, Carrie Camrig, and one from the high school, Salem Derby, led the program using an adventure-based learning pedagogy. The goals of the program are to help students learn about learn about themselves, how to overcome obstacles, how to set smart goals, and to build their teamwork skills. This program has been in existence for five years, and this year that um, seven eighth graders uh, from JFK attended the program for four weeks. During this time, students participated in activities including hiking, kayaking on the Connecticut River, a ropes course at Camp Howe, biking, zip lining, swimming, belaying and rock climbing, um, and they use the facilities in our schools as well as Northampton Athletic Club and Chapel Ledges. In professional learning, Elise Langer Smith was accepted into and attended the UMass Amherst STEM Digital Summer Institute. The institute this year took place at the end of June and taught participants how to use free educational software that analyzes color, qualities, and digital photographs. Over the course of the program, participants learned how to interpret photographic data to investigate environmental quality issues, such as measuring car exhaust for carbon dioxide levels, analyzing the amounts of arsenic in various water sources, and evaluating the ozone intensity around the UMass campus. Math teachers Mike Susi, Michelle Eastman, and Diana Smith partnered with special ed teachers Sarah Churchill, Nancy Adamirka, and Nicole Walden at the first training of a two-year program focused on formative assessments in the math classroom. This team attended a three-day training focused on using the common core concepts to structure lessons. Uh, this training was developed to show what students will gain from the lesson and what they will be able to perform following the lesson. Over at Bridge Street School, our new principal, Beth Chiquette, will be starting her doctoral program in the Educational Policy and Leadership Pro, um, Department at UMass Amherst in September. Jed Dion is in his second week of summer math. Um, he's very excited to use these new strategies in his classroom in September. And our two kindergarten teachers completed their Tools of the Mind training and obtained an app for the program to use on individual iPads and instruction on how to implement this in their classrooms. At Jackson Street, the school community is carefully tending to the school garden in the midst of our heat and drought, but thanks to a core group of volunteers who are committed to the watering, weeding, and harvesting through the summer, the garden is maintaining healthy status. At Ryan Road, teacher Michelle Andrews, Paula Drabeck, and Andrea Aguido are leading district grade level colleagues in developing English language arts curriculum to match the Massachusetts frameworks. Beth Brady, Susan Lucy, and Patty Toswell uh, will attend a responsive classroom workshop on August 15th in which they will be trained to lead their staff uh, colleagues in two aspects of the responsive classroom approach. Those two are how to teach discipline in the classroom and using teacher language. The project is funded by a grant through NEF and it will allow the school to continue deepening their res responsive classroom methods. Amy Desmond in grade four is attending the Western Massachusetts Writing Project this summer. And that, I'm sorry, Ann Desmond, thank you for the correction. And 10 teachers at Ryan Road will study strategies to develop reading comprehension in a graduate course through Westfield State University. Uh, they will do this, um, actually they're doing it this week, August 6th through the 10th. Uh, the professor, and also one of the parents uh, at Ryan Road, Stephanie Grimaldi, is teaching the course. Attending is Diana Ramson, Andrea Aguido, Paula Drabeck, Sarah Simmons, Michelle Andrews, Greg Kurtzstedler, Amy Pilger, Mary Beth O'Connor, Lisa LeBeau, Krista Metrishan, and Karen Hurd. Uh, Margie Riddle, principal, is also going to audit the course. Over at Leeds School, uh, eight teachers and two ESPs are going to the first level of responsive classroom training this week in Avon, Connecticut. And they are looking forward to being able to bring that knowledge back and to continue to develop the Leeds School community. Finally, one of my promises and commitments to you was that we were going to improve the school choice process. And so you have some information there on enrollment. Um, the, sure you had a chance to look at, but I want to make sure I highlight a few things for you. 
Since the start of the 11-12 school year, 51 school choice students have withdrawn. Uh, this reduction is due to students who moved into the district, then moved away and returned to a home district, or students who graduated. But as of July 31st, 2012, as we start the new school year, we have 237 school choice students. To break that down for you, 63 school choice seats were opened on May 1st, and 15 additional seats have since been opened. So of those 78 seats that we opened, 74 have been filled. 17 of those were filled with students who moved out of the district and then applied back to the school choice program so they could stay in their classes and graduate with their class. So we therefore have a net enrollment increase of 57 students since those, um, so if you take the 17 out who are already enrolled, uh, we have a net increase of 57 students in school choice. And I wanted you to see the result of the hard work that Jen Towler has done with our families and getting that application process streamlined. I believe that concludes my superintendent report tonight. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah. I wanted to comment on what the class sizes look like for next year because they really look wonderful. Um, I'm so glad that's the comment. <laughs> well, I don't know what else it could be. Um, generally, this time of year, we're starting to hear from parents about the classrooms that they're concerned about. Mm. I haven't heard from anybody yet, and now I can see why. Yeah. Um, so, um, hmm? yeah, thanks to we, the work again of Jen Tyler and the principals, they've done a, a wonderful job of balancing the classes and we do not have any, uh, any classrooms in the district that I'm concerned about class sizes being too large. They're very favorable. I, I had a, a constituent call me and was wondering what would happen. They're in the process of selling their home and um, or going to be moving shortly or something. They knew of the April 20th deadline, but they didn't know they were going to be moving. And they wanted to continue the kids in this um, school, in our schools. Is it too late for them to do that? Well, that's actually a pretty common request. You should have a person call Jennifer Tyler, the registrar's office, and uh, she handles those questions every day. Okay. Any other questions? I just had a question about the AP uh, numbers, which are great. Yeah. Does every student have to take the exam within the class, or is that uh, optional? How does that work? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so. I I'm guess sorry? hearing from Stephanie, is that, students is that who take the of a high school, or is a requirement when you sign up for the classes with the understanding the that you take the yeah. exam? Great. Thank you. Okay. So uh, that completes the superintendent report, uh, and I believe that included the AP test right. results. Okay. Yep. This was previous. Uh, so then the next item is a uh, report from. Uh, Ms. Pick on the school committee alt retreat. I will defer to the Actually, superintendent. I'll take that, okay. and this will be brief. Uh, see you there. Uh, I just want to say thank you for participating in this retreat uh, with our administrative leadership team. It's uh, truly remarkable how well we work together as a team and share the, leader the leadership of our district. That uh, school committee members, you come to school committee uh, hoping to lead initiatives and change and progress in our district. And I, I, I think that that's uh, greatly appreciated by our administrators. And they enjoy the partnership that they share with you. And I know that that's growing and evolving each time we get together. You know, we started um, our first retreat, my first day last year. And we did our second one in January as we built the district improvement plan together. And that's exceptional. It's actually quite rare in the state that uh, teams would, an administrative leadership team would do that with the school committee. And then for us to then take that and put the fine details together and share that work um, on August 1st, uh, it's really something special about being in Northampton and being a part of this team. So I want to thank you for that. At the three-day retreat, we covered a lot of ground. We got a lot of work done, uh, mainly on the implementation of instructional rounds. Uh, how we're going to implement the new teacher evaluation tool and system starting in September. We built the specific strategies in our district improvement plan 
and of course we had a chance uh, the final night to talk about uh, the future funding and finances of public education which I know we have a lot of great ideas and know uh, specific ways to get more money into education September uh, but we we do share the commitment to doing that and working on it together. So I thought it was a very effective and productive retreat. And I'm glad we were all a part of it together. Thank you. Um, the next uh, final item is the update on the superintendent evaluation. Um, so at this point, the, uh, the ALT members and the um, Northampton Public Schools staff have all had the opportunity to fill out their survey monkey tools and I have to say I'm really, really pleased and impressed with the participation that we've had. Um, not only did people fill out the forms and click all the little boxes they have to click, but people really took the time to write um, some detailed comments and really give us the inf some information that we've never really had access to before. You all have the opportunity to go, school committee members have the opportunity to go to central office to get access to that information, um, which I encourage you to do before we fill out our own. Our own surveys, uh, our own evaluation tools, sorry, um, will be online um, after, after tonight. It's going up online. You have until August 20th to get it completed. This is mandatory. This isn't a, a suggestion that you do. This is part of your duty as a school committee. Um, Remember, the, um, you sign yours. Um, our evaluation tools, I remind you, are um, open, are, become public documents. So um, be mindful in your comments, and I encourage you to um, write as much commentary as you um, can come up with to, to give the superintendent as much information as possible um, as he develops his, um, his own professional goals for the next year. Um, so again, you have till August 20th. Um, p please don't push it past that, that, I that we pushed it to a Monday so you'd have through that weekend. The um, evaluation team, that's um, Lisa Menick and um, Alden and myself, um, then go through all of your evaluations to um, write up a, um, a summary that will get read into the public record um, on September 13th. But before that, so we, we have to write it up, then we will sit with the superintendent, go over it, and. Um, um, amend it if we need to, and then we will present uh, as September 13. Anybody have any questions about that, especially about the timing? Do you want to make it clear how the where, how the evaluation is done? Like, is it through an email or? No, it's it's going to be online. It's um, it's very um, similar like to what the, here, what the what the alt members did. Right. Actually, it's the same as what the alt members did. Um, it's going to be online. Um, you will. Um, you will not be anonymous for you the way it was for everybody else. Um, if you haven't been to central office yet, um, I would allot about an hour and a half, uh, if, unless you're really familiar with Survey Monkey Tools. It, it took me a little bit, it took me about an hour and a quarter to read everything, but it took me a little bit more just to figure out how to do it efficiently. Um, it's it's really a pretty amazing tool um, in the in the information that you can have very easy access to. Um, yeah, so you will have a, a survey. There will be plenty of space to write commentary. In the, may I add, um, in the self-assessment booklet that I've given to you, the first page behind every tab is the screen of the survey monkey. So you see what it looks like with the standard, the indicator, and then um, you check your rating. But when you go to central office to see the others, for every question it will say below that they're um, to see comments and you click on that and all of the comments come up and they're generally anywhere between 25 and 50 comments per question. Um, I, I really applaud the staff who took the time to do that. Uh, very helpful for us and for the superintendent. Is it closed now for the staff? I mean, yes. What it is it is? Yeah. Yeah. Ours will be closed after the 20th. So get it in. <laughs> I'll be hounding you. Okay. Thank you for that update. Um, I don't believe we have any. We do. We have old business. We do have old business because uh, <coughs> back in December, we voted and ratified the contracts, the collective bargaining agreement, and oh, we need the signature page 
Uh, so I believe, do we have a copy of the signature page tonight? I have, I have not seen it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I thought we had that. Do we have it? <laughs> All of us are going to be going to central office. Does it need to be signed in a public meeting? Um, doesn't need to be signed in a public meeting. It does need to be signed, so I was hoping to complete that tonight so we can uh, give the raises to the people that were supposed to be in effect uh, July 1st. So we have the contracts. We know they're agreed upon. We know they're ratified, but HR won't pay them without the signature sheet. So if you could stop by the office, we'll have that ready for you um, starting tomorrow morning. This morning. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we had it tonight. My apologies. And if you could get an... Um that message out to the members who aren't here tonight. One's out of, does it need everybody? Or does it need five? Does it need all? Sharon, do you know? Actually, I think it just needs Stephanie. Just needs Stephanie. Oh. Uh. <coughs> okay. It's been ratified, it's just a page. Right, we need a signature page, page. right. Oh, so all the people don't have to step in? Um, why don't we uh, check the sheet tomorrow and we'll let you know if you need to stop in or not. Just do an MOU until we get the contract. It's just as easy to sign it tomorrow and get it over to HR. So uh, we'll work on that. Again, my apologies for not putting it in the packet tonight. Okay. Is there any other old business? That was it. Any uh, new business? Okay. Uh, future business and meeting dates. Uh, this next school committee meeting will be September 13, 2012. And I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Ten to nine.